music actually has its roots in music pretty much. Uh, we're focusing on leadership in the gig economy and the reason the gig economy is called the gig economy is because previously it was limited to musicians who got paid per gig. Yeah. Kind of like how we get paid. Exactly. It's not all glitz and glamour. Yes, it does have the glitz and glamour but at the end of the day we need to pay our bills correct, and correct, with correct. each gig that we get the more basically the more gig we have the more money we get but correct. it also means that we don't have any form of security. But today, this economy is not just limited to the performing arts, mm -hmm. it's taken on a life of its own. Yeah. In fact, we're going to find out just how big the gig economy is with our guest in the studio. Uh, now, Mr. Lalith is, of course, the Chief Marketing Officer of iClip. So, before we go any further, could you tell us a little bit more what you guys do at iClip? So, uh, iClip, it's a leadership and governance Eclipse, center. Right. So, we are fully uh, owned and funded by Bank Negara. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a not-for-profit organization. Uh, we focus on two things. We focus on uh, leadership development programs for senior executives of large organizations, and we do corporate governance programs for board of directors. Okay. Uh, we had our humble beginnings in 2003, uh, focused on financial sector in Malaysia. Uh, and in the last five to six years, we have grown dramatically. We are now have clients in 22 countries, wow. and financial sector is only about one-third of our revenue. So Ooh. the gig economy must have changed the way you exactly. do business because uh, it is not just you know, limited to people like us who get paid per gig. Mm -hmm. It's now you know, all inclusive. It's uh, Uber drivers, Grab, uh, Grab drivers, uh, it is uh, the food delivery guys. It's also people in corporate finance. Mm -hmm. It's also people in HR. So tell us about how the gig economy has changed. So the gig economy has come a long way. As you rightly said, it started with musicians of performing arts. Uh, and uh, it is growing dramatically. So the term gig, actually it's a slang, which means job for a specified period of time. Right? Right. Okay. So it includes free agents, freelancers, temporary contractors, etc. cetera. Uh, the way it is growing is, uh, and there are a number of other con connotations that come with the gig economy. So for example, a grab driver, as you rightly said, is a gig economy worker, right? right? It's a free agent. Now he drives for grab, but he does not have a boss. Right. He does not work for Grab. Right. He decides when and how much he wants to work. He has that freedom and flexibility, and he enjoys that. Right. So, for example, if today is this Grab driver's wife's birthday, he may decide to take her out for lunch and have a leisurely lunch with her. But he knows fully well that to make up for that time, he needs to drive more later in the evening. Right. right. So nobody has to tell him that he needs to work harder or longer hours if he wants to earn more. Mm -hmm. So that kind of a flexibility and that responsibility goes together and that's the interesting part about the gig economy. Okay, like like Terence said, we both of us are basically freelancers, right? In, in, in simple terms, freelancers. Um, but with as much as we love having the time to set, like you said, with a bit like Grab Driver, he or she may set a few hours, you know, whether or not they want to work within this period of hours, um, whether how much money they earn is based on the amount of hours they put in. So how do I Cliff, uh, Ecliff actually come in and help out freelancers and basically do you guys help us monitor or, or what's the correlation between iCliff and freelancers at no, this so point? We, uh, we look at leadership development, mm -hmm. right? And today we are all living in open source era where everything is open and transparent. Uh, if you look at the way our lives have changed dramatically just in the last five to ten years, but leadership and management practices have not. Correct. So there are, when we talk about digital transformation, there are two parts to it. You know, one is applying digitization and technology to your business models and see how it is going to change and make you more competitive. Mm -hmm. But the second part is the leadership and the people part. And that's the bit that we focus on. You know, how do you uh, lead and manage people differently? How do you create a culture of uh, innovation, which is extremely important in today's environment? How do you motivate and enable performance in today's environment? For example, when we talk about the gig economy and the free agents or the free freelancers, right, they have a whole lot of freedom right. and, and flexibility. right. Now, if you look at 20th century management and leadership, it was all about control. More control leads to more productivity, <laughs> leads to more profitability. Right? Yes, boss. And, and you, absolutely. And like people used to take pride in saying we are a zero tolerance uh, organization. Right. Yeah. But today, that is not possible. You cannot 
consumption to treat your employees the way you did, let's say, 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Because you have a growing gig economy where people have a whole lot of flexibility and freedom. You cannot continue to tr treat your employees the way you did 10, 20 years ago. So yeah, you exactly. need to give them more freedom and more flexibility within the realm of whatever you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the size of the gig economy, how big is it as we speak today? So there are a number of estimates. Mm -hmm. So let me share some um, statistics with you. Uh, and I'll share some of the conservative estimates with you. So some of the statistics say that 36% of US population is already free agents. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which means one in three worker in US is already a free agent or a freelancer. And do you know what that number in Malaysia is? Oh yeah, we're waiting for that figure. 26%. So one in four people in uh, Malaysia are free agents, yeah. right? So it is no longer a Silicon Valley phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It is here and now, and you see those changes happening today. So as we move forward, what we see is that uh, more and more people will be opting for more flexibility and freedom, right? If you look at the millennials, they are for meaning more than money. They want more flexibility and freedom. And according to some estimates, 75% of the workforce by 2025 will be millennials. And you see where this gig economy is going. Yeah, it's it's like I, I do agree to some extent because um, I would consider myself as part of yeah. the millennials, you know, still 26, uh, still young, <laughs> and um, most of the things that my my friends and uh, and I discuss are why aren't companies giving us the type of freedom? Because we always argue between uh, productivity and you know spending the amount of eight hours in the office. If I if I am that, if I finish my work within that five hours, that three hours, why don't I spend it somewhere else? You know, because at the end of the day. If I'm a happy worker, I am more inclined to uh, be more productive for the company I'm working for. So trust me, what you're expecting is going to become a norm in every industry and in every organization. So traditionally, as I was saying, uh, that most of the leadership was all about control, right? About rules, policies, and procedures, right? We talk to CEOs and board of directors. We ask them, you know, what percentage of your time do you spend enforcing rules versus enforcing values, mm. right? And people talk about 90 to 10. 90% 90 of their time is wow. spent enforcing rules, policies, and procedures. Now in today's time, if you are driven more by rules and policies, pretty soon your organization is drowning in the red pool of bureaucracy, right? right? You're not giving any uh, freedom to your employees, mm -hmm. there's no risk taking, and hence there is no innovation, right? And you know those organizations are not gonna survive. So what we propose is that the leadership now needs to be driven by enforcing values. You need right. to enforce a values-based culture. You need to create a freedom within that framework of values that you need to give to your employees mm -hmm. so that they have a little bit of agility. They're willing to take some risks and they're willing to create innovations for your company to survive in today's environment. Yes. So, yeah, well, that, that's an interesting trade-off, I think, for some companies because uh, they still have the legacy mindset of uh, perhaps the generation before. Mm -hmm. So how do you then suppose people take up leadership positions within the gig economy? Because if 75% of the economy is the gig economy, uh, there's no succession, there's no leadership, there's no structure. Yeah, so it is tough. So I, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. The people that we uh, do these leadership development programs for, they and when we give them all these thoughts and ideas in terms of how leadership needs to change, uh, they kind of nod like you're nodding. Mm -hmm. They agree and they smile, but they say, but this is not for me. Right. <laughs> we are different. My organization is different. And then we go deeper into, you know, what is it that your organization can do in moving towards that continuum? Mm -hmm. So the way we look at it is that on one end of the continuum is the gig uh, workers in terms of how you treat them with freedom and flexibility. And this is where the traditional organizations are. What we're saying is, what is the start that you can make for your organization and move on that continuum towards making the gig economy work? Because that is what the future of uh, the economy is. When CEOs become a part of the gig economy, that would be an amazing That'll future. That would be <laughs> CEO just be like, I'm coming at this hour, I'm leaving at this hour, you know. Uh, as long as I get my work done. But at the end of the day, um, the reason why we work is, of course, to earn money. And um, in, in, do you have a rough estimate as to 
how much a person could get per gig? Mm -hmm. um, is that a bit too of a personal question to ask? No, so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, based on the research, right, number of people are ending up earning a lot more as gig workers right. compared to the full-time employment, right? Now, there are a number of thoughts that come to us, uh, you know, when we talk about gig economy. They say uh, there'll be exploitation of workers or the free agents, right? Uh, the counter to that is that actually the permanent employees, a lot of them, they feel that they are stuck, right? They feel that they are being harassed, right? So free agents, they feel that they are a little bit more free, etc. The second is about the safety net, right? As soon as you become a free agent, you lose the safety net, mm. right? Uh, the counter thought to that is actually gig economy, I think it offers a safety net, right? Today, if you lose your job, you can go to uh, websites like Upwork or Freelance or Crowdsource, put your skills on there and mm. find a job, right? Mm. Or if you have a car, you could start driving as a grab driver tomorrow and start making some money. When do you think in the history did you have that opportunity, right? So the gig economy actually offers a safety net for people rather than taking away the safety net in a way. Uh, oh, very interesting. I, I suppose that's one part of it, right? But the other part of it is the gig worker has got to be a bit more financially literate than mm -hmm. the generation before. He's got to know how to protect himself in the case of injury, loss of income, and that kind of thing. So uh, besides taking up leadership positions in the gig economy, uh, per se, within organizations, how would you advise gig economy workers to look at the industry with uh, not just too much enthusiasm, mm -hmm. but also a little bit of caution. Yeah. So there's a whole lot of social security piece that needs to be taken care of. So right. if you are in a permanent job, the organization takes care of your health care, your social security, your right. benefits, etc. And I believe it's a matter of time, right? So if you look at Starbucks, right? Starbucks, they provide full health care and, uh, and employee benefits yeah. to their temporary workers, mm -hmm. right? So Starbucks uh, is uh, already doing that. Right. I think more and more organizations will follow suit. So uh, all those gaps which are there in the gig economy and the free agents right now, I think they'll be taken care of as we move forward. Yeah, yeah no, I was talking to a grab driver as well, and this was something that was quite interesting because uh, she talked about how even in the grab world, for example, um, there are people who do it full-time and part-time. And actually, uh, certain companies, uh, they are slowly realizing that they do need the workers, you know, even though they're free agents, freelancers, they do need it and they need to provide some sort of security. So I think with certain companies, they do offer um, some part, some form of insurance. You know, you can take a part-time insurance or a full, full insurance. Um, so that's actually very interesting. I'm very excited to see, you know, where our uh, economy is going to head towards uh, 2025. Yes. Yes, millennials are going to take over. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> People like you need to take over. Yes. Right? <laughs> so so I've I got to ask the question, what would it mean for unions, organizations, and, and you know, bodies that represent gig workers? Uh, is there a future for something like that? Is there a need for something like that? Maybe. So one of the views that we have is that in open source era, everything is open and transparent, right? Mm -hmm. So these things, they get self-regulated, right? There is no place to hide, right? Uh, if, uh, I mean, we have no privacy, you know, um, and if there is a silver lining to this dark cloud of no privacy, it is that being transparent will make people a lot more honest because everything that you say or do is going to be out there in the media, mm -hmm. right? So a uh, lot of it is going to be self-regulated, right? Uh, but that's, I think, being uh, too optimistic, but I think there will be some place for some uh, uh, regulations and some public policy. Uh, like most of the things that are outcome of digital uh, economy, you know, for example, when Uber came out, it spread like wildfire, right? right? Yeah. There was a lot more public acceptance before the public policy could come in to take care of that, right? And I think there will be a similar case for gig economy. So gig economy is going to explode. It's already exploding. And uh, I think public policy and the regulations uh, will catch up at some point in time. As they are today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank are. you very much, Mr. Lally, for being here on the program. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome.